You may not think a white bishop is qualified to speak about racism, but wouldn't that be racist? <laughs> Let me invite you to spend the next seven minutes with me as we discuss two sore and painful topics. The first is racism, and the second I'll tell you about in a minute. But before I do, welcome to Mornings with Bishop Robert, and thanks for joining me, even on a day we're discussing racism. My goal is to introduce people to the Jesus they never knew and help them get to know him and his word personally and better. If our time together speaks to your heart, then let me invite you to like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Racism is nasty. In my experience, it's a function of which population is in the majority in a given time and place. And yes, I've been the victim of racism on a number of occasions. One time, I was walking down a street in the Arab neighborhoods of Jerusalem, and I am definitely not able to blend in with a largely Arab population. As my friend and I walked and talked, he suddenly pushed me backwards. A full can of Coke whizzed by my face and slammed into the ground beside me, popping open and spurting soda pop everywhere. Standing three stories above me, a group of Arab youths stood on the roof of their school, one of them pointing and laughing. He had attacked me simply because I was a white man in an Arab neighborhood walking with a Jewish man at my side. Not the only example I could give, but a good one. Racists hate people simply because, well, they're not like them. They often know nothing else about them. Racist behavior is utterly without merit and wholly absent of any redeeming qualities. It makes no difference if the target is black, brown, yellow, or white. It's disgusting, and it's without excuse. As for me, I've got clergy and friends in all the groups I've mentioned. I serve with a South Korean bishop who has spent the last several years working in Jordanian refugee camps for Syrians. I've got great relationships with black bishops and white ones all across Africa, Asia, and South America. I've worked with white Australian Christians serving Jerusalem's darker-skinned Jews and Arabs. I've got priests in mixed-race marriages and Arabs who were terrorists before meeting Jesus. And that leads me to my second painful topic and our verse for today. Today's verse says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The second topic of the day is sin, and a new word I just made up, gracist. <laughs> Gracists reach out in love to every element of the population near them, regardless of color, lineage, or any other factor. They do it because God has placed his love for them in their hearts. Mother Teresa was a gracist, and so was Billy Graham. In 1963, he gathered the first large-scale integrated crowd in Birmingham, Alabama's history by bringing 30,000 black and white people together for his crusade. In speaking about racism, Billy said, only the supernatural love of God through changed men can solve this burning question. Christ was not so much a reformer as he was a transformer. Well, it's people transformed by grace that are no longer concerned about race. So a funny thing I noticed about PLO terrorists is they hate Israel and Israelis until they come to a saving faith in Jesus Christ. Then God deals with their hatred, and they see things in a totally different light. Gracists love people simply because they are people, and especially people who need the love of Jesus. They often know nothing else about them. Gracist behavior relies totally on the merit of Jesus. 
and is wholly focused on his redeeming qualities. It makes no difference if the person is black, brown, yellow, or white. It's a love-driven action, reaching out to people who are without excuse and without any other hope to be freed from their sin. Are you a gracist? Someone who's always ready to give an answer to anyone who asks the reason for the hope that lies within you? Is your life driven by love and grace? Racism is sin, but so is a very long list of other selfish, hate-filled, and destructive behaviors. The people walking our streets don't need to be reformed. They need to be transformed by the love of Christ. Jesus turns racists righteous and makes terrorists peacemakers. The payment coming for those whose life is still controlled by sin is death. And Jesus gives life as a gift. Jesus is the ultimate gracist. And he invites you to follow him and be set free. Race and grace are intrinsically related because there is only one race. It's the human race. And we're all together in it. And all of us need Jesus. Because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Before I go, can I ask all of you gracists to help me with something? My goal is to introduce people to the Jesus they never knew and then help them get to know him and his word personally and better. And I could use your help. Please like this video to help more people see it and follow or subscribe so you and I can get together every day. I'd love to meet you in the comments section and hear about how our time together touched your heart and spoke to you about grace. Also a great place to leave a question, even one on race. <laughs> and one more thing, share it with a friend, would you? As you do, you're part of a team of people touching the hearts of folks all over the world with the love of Jesus Christ. Thanks for helping.